Good afternoon, Rovers fans. Alex Holmes here, aka Holmesy of Blackburn Rovers season. I'm excited to bring you this season's take on the Premier League ta 2 campaign of Blackburn Rovers under 21. That's right, we are the only academy in the championship that takes part in this league. A great honour as we take on the money and the might of the Premier League. This week we're going to have a look back at our game against Everton, the first game of the season, and look forward to the game this weekend versus the mighty Wolverhampton Wanderers under 21. Unfortunately, it wasn't the start that we were hoping for. Um, going down 2-0 versus the Toffees under 21. We did boss play, especially in that first half. Um, but Everton were there looking to take us on the break. Um, and unfortunately, a ball over the top. And Thomas Christopher Cannon did run around and put the ball in the back of the net. And from there, it was a bit harder to get back into the game. We did have our opportunities though, a ball headed onto the post from a Marconde corner, um, unfortunately didn't go in, and then a really punch to the gut came at the beginning of the second half as we're looking to get a foothold back in the game, Sean McAllister coming in from the left and curling the ball into the, into the corner. Looking at shots on target, you know Blackburn had the majority 18 to 13, I think tells the story of the game, unfortunately a lot of those shots were coming in from deeper. Um, we did have 16 free kicks, but the big stat, 12 corners to their, their three, shows we were on the front foot for the majority of the game. Unfortunately, just wasn't to be. How did Everton line up? Well, they had a 4-4-2 formation. Um, the most notable name that came up against us is the Everton and Ireland captain Seamus Coleman. Coming back from a long layoff, he didn't take part in pre-season, so he was there bolstering, bolstering up their side. How did Blackburn line up? Well, we had Dylan Marconde, of course, coming in down from the senior side, um, getting some minutes in his legs. Unfortunately, as we know, got injured first game of the season last year for... Well, his debut game for Blackburn after Tony Mowbray brought him in from Tottenham. So let's hope that he, he can start getting into some form, showing some form and pushing on for that senior, senior side. Um, other notable names in the side that everyone will, will recognize, Danny Butterworth. He was very much part of Tony Mowbray's plans last season. Always on the bench, always looking to get onto the field. Um, unfortunately, he seems to have dropped down the pecking order with the JDT era in the under-21s, back in the under-21s. Hasn't been given a squad number. So it'll be interesting to see where his future lies. Is it with Blackburn or is it possibly away from Blackburn? But for the moment, it's great having him in the under-21s and we hope that he finds some form that took him to the senior side and he can start banging in a couple of goals. Head to head in the lineup, it was 4-4-2 versus 4-4-2, pretty much equaling each other out. Rovers making three substitutions, um, not using the extra, uh, other two that they get, while Everton used four and didn't use the remaining one. Where does that leave us on the table? Well, Everton are in that top five. Blackburn in the bottom three there, of course. We don't really need to look at a championship table after one game. The only time you should be looking at a championship table after a few games is the championship table. And that is where Blackburn Rovers are, of course, number one. Looking ahead now to Wolverhampton Wanderers this coming weekend. How are we going to line up? Are we going to manage to bring our start, kick, kick start our season? Well, let's have a look. First of all, taking a look at the manager, Mike Sheeran. Came to Blackburn in 2019 as a development coach, youth development coach. <coughs> Got that under-21 job in taking over from Dane Johnson in September 2021. This will be his second full season in charge. He's a bit older, a bit wiser now. Um, enjoys 4-2-2-2. Uh, four, 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 two, two, two. Um, you know, that's why Louis Ainersley actually played in defensive midfield this last weekend as opposed to his normal centre-back, a position he does play for Gibraltar, actually. But the idea is to get the ball to the wings and two, two attacking focal points there, two, two attackers to knock the ball in the back of the net. Our most loyal player of Blackburn Rovers under 21 this week is Louis Ainersley. 
just mentioned previously, is a centre-back, has been known to play in that deep midfield role, picking up the scraps, um, putting in a hard challenge here and there. He does sit at 1 metre, stand at 1 metre 93, likes getting his head on the ball, knocking it up, heading it back up the park. He is an international for Gibraltar, commonly known as the Rock of Gibraltar. Taking a look at the greater squad here, this is a little bit outdated. We do know that Conor McBride has moved on, um, but some great names in there looking to be the next John Buckley, the next Travis moving up through the Blackburn ranks. Of course, Adam Wharton just made his senior debut this last week. Um, Jack Vale has had a couple of games, you know, made that step up. These are exciting prospects for the future. Sam Barnes, sadly, injuring himself on the verge of getting into onto the bench. Um, we have seen Serenio before, frighteningly fast. Um, Aidan Dowling had the goalkeeper's jersey this last weekend. Joe Hindleton is there to, to step in, has been the incumbent. Um, so a good solid squad this season. And of course, they're going to be bolstered by players coming down. Um, getting a bit of game time, getting a bit of match fitness um, and imparting a bit of their knowledge on, onto this youthful team. If we take a closer look at their team and their manager, you've got Jamie Collins. This is his third season in charge being appointed in 2020. He likes a good four-man back, back four, um, one holding midfielder, two, two midfielders just sitting in front of him, of, of the holding midfielder distributing the ball, and two wings getting the ball to a focal point number nine, Fraser. Their most loyal player is Andreas Sondergaard. He is a Dane and he stands at 1 meter 88. He is their goal, a goalkeeper. He's been on the verge of making that senior step up to the senior side. He has been on the bench before, but up until this point hasn't hasn't quite made the step. His contract does expire in June 30 June 30th 2023, so this is his last season. Is he going to get an extension or is he going to start looking elsewhere? That is a big question for Wolves most loyal player. How does it stack up head to head? Well, 90 our average age is 19.9 just under 20 whereas Wolves is 19.5 we do have that one national team player of course Louis Ainsley the rock of Gibraltar and we've got two youth national team players versus their six of course Wolves are populated by a lot more foreigners um, whereas we only have six we like to have that homegrown talent and that's what makes Blackburn strong our last 10 meetings, well, as you can see, it's largely been in Blackburn's favour. Winning seven, seven of the last 10 meetings, drawing one and losing only two. So we hope that we will continue in the same vein, giving ourselves an eighth win in the last 10. And that's all from me. Thank you so much for listening. As always, give us a like, give us a follow. It's been great having you and I look forward to reporting on a great victory for Blackburn Under 21 versus Wolves.